Okay, um, I'm going to start this problem here. Um, so again, you've seen this before, uh, but now I'm going to do the so-called direct assembly method, which is probably the, the way you should um, get used to doing it in this class. Uh, you, everybody, everybody can do this. It's not that hard. It's just, it's just a little bit odd. And, uh, uh, but it's clearly the fastest way to do this. And you can look at ra rather complicated uh, meshes and directly get the answer, okay? So, uh, having seen it both by sum of forces on the nodes as well as summing the element forces, we've gotten the same um, result for global stiffness matrix, and, and we'll get the same here as well. Uh, so I'll just show it up here. That's the result we got before, right? Where the first element resides uh, in the upper two by two block, and the second element stiffness matrix resides in the lower two by two block, the lower right two by two block, and they overlap right in the middle, adding K1 and K2. Right? We'll get the same thing here, but we'll do this by direct stiffness, all right? So let's just recall the stiffness matrices, right? So the first element stiffness matrix, uh, let's do it this way, is gonna be the scalar value K1 times minus one, I'm sorry, one, positive one, minus one, minus one, positive one. And what does this do? Actually, I should do it this way, forget about this. Let's not write this here. This is the first element stiffness matrix, and it is going to relate the displacements at node 1 and 2 to the forces at nodes 1 and nodes 2. Now, actually, remember, these are actually the forces due to the element stretching, right? And for the second element, we get the spring stiffness K2, 1, minus 1, minus one minus 1, 1, right? And this is going to relate the displacements at node 2 and node 3 to the forces at node 2 and node 3. In the first approach, right, we, we augmented these stiffness matrices with zeros to make them 3 by 3 and then directly assemble them, right? Or sum them, I should say. In this particular case, it's basically going to be the same thing but we won't even have to write the augmented stiffness matrix. So this is really the way that you do it. Uh, and also this is pretty much the way a computer program would do it as well, okay? Uh, whether you're assembling two elements or uh, two million elements, all right? So let's first look at the properties of the stiffness matrix, okay? So we have this three by three. This is the global stiffness matrix. As we've talked about before, the rows are the three discrete finite element equations. These are like sum of forces on node one, sum of forces on node two, and sum of forces on node three, okay? So this first row multiplied by the column vector of the nodal unknowns gives you the net external force applied to node one. Likewise, second row, gives you on node two, and then the third row dotted with the D1, D2, three column vector gives you the uh, external force on node three, okay? All right, now what about the columns? Well, in each one of these three equations, the first column is the coefficient that multiplies by D1. So I'll put a little D1 down here. Likewise, the second column are the coefficients of D2, two for the sum of forces equation and column three are the coefficients or the weights um, for d3 so another way people explain this is like we call them influence coefficients so for example this value here okay this is the influence coefficient of moving node one on to the sum of forces at node two. Or for example, this one is the influence or the force contribution of moving node three 
on to node one, the force balance on node one. So this turns out to be a zero, which makes sense because if you move node three and keep the other nodes fixed, it does not put any additional force onto node one, okay? All right, okay. So now going back to this, right? All right, so this first stiffness equation, this first stiffness matrix relationship is uh, on the first element, it relates the displacements at node one and node two to the forces at node one and two. So it's gonna relate columns one and two, the displacements at node one and two, to the forces at node one and two, or basically the first two rows, okay? So that's why it sits here, okay? And likewise, you could see, again, if we put, let me just put it in and you'll see why more obviously. K1 minus K1 minus K1, and then I'll put the K1 here and give myself a little room because I'll have to add K2 in there in a second, right? So this actually gives me this equation, if you think about it, right? K1 times D1 minus K1 times D2 equals F1, right? Minus K1 times D1 plus K1 times D2 gives me F2. That's the second equation, all right? All right, now let's look at those resulting from the second element. Second element relates displacements at nodes two and three to the force balances at node two and three. So again, it's not too surprising that it will sit in this lower right two by two region of the global stiffness matrix. So we directly put in plus K2 minus K2 minus K2 and then K2 and everywhere else there's no other elements, so that completes the assembly if we put zeros there. And so here you can see, again, if we just look at what we just added, that gives me um, the equations we get from the second element stiffness matrix, and they just overlap at node two, and you get the following global stiffness matrix, just like we had before, okay? Let's do one that's maybe a little more interesting just to show how this works out, okay? Let's pick something. Uh, all right. Let's do more than two elements for now. And we'll do this one relatively quick, so you can you can pause and go back over this. It's not too hard. But let's pick uh, uh, something like this. We'll put some springs in parallel. I'll call this thing here one big node, okay? Because it all moves the same way. And then we'll put another spring out here. Let's say we put some forces here. And we fix these nodes, okay? So, uh, although you can assemble uh, these two springs in parallel, let's assume we don't know how to do that yet, okay? And I'm going to call this node 1, node 2, node 3, and node 4. And let's call this K1, K2, and K3. All right? So we have three elements, four nodes. So there's going to be four degrees of freedom, right? D1, D2, D3, and D4. The displacements of those four nodes, right? So the global stiffness matrix is going to be a four by four in this case. So let's see if I can draw that out. So let's do my anyway, four rows. Let's give myself four columns if I get enough space. Okay, that's this. That's the global stiffness matrix. squished up on top, but that's okay. That's going to be the weights for the nodal unknowns, D1, D2, D3, and D4. And those forces due to the element stiffness matrices are going to sum T1, 
to give you the external forces at the nodes F1, F2, F3, and F4, okay? Now we're gonna do this by direct assembly, so I, I really don't need any more space than this, okay? All right, so let's look at the first element. This is the sort of the trickier one, right? The first element, what does it do? It's relating, well, let me, this is uh, sum of forces on node one, sum of forces on node two, sum of forces on node three, and sum of forces on node four, and the columns are associated with D1, D2, D3, and D4, right? So the first element connects node one to node three, okay? So it's relating the displacements at node one and node three to the forces at node one and node three. So it's actually gonna sit here, 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 and here, right? It's gonna relate the, you know, if we move node one, the force on node one, if we move node three, the force on node one, if we move node one, the force on node three, and if we move node three, the force on node three, okay? It doesn't really influence any other force balances and it doesn't involve the displacement of any other nodes okay so let's let's fill that out so you'll get a k1 here a minus k1 minus k1 and then k1 so we call this sometimes a scatter process because we're scattering the element stiffness matrix into the global stiffness matrix all right let's do the second element this one goes between nodes two and three, so it's gonna relate the displacements at nodes two and three to the forces at nodes two and three. So it's gonna sit right here, okay? And so there we go, we're gonna put in K2 minus K2 minus K2 and then plus K2. All right, I'm gonna need a little more space there actually. And then finally we add the last element in. The last element relates the displacements at node three and four to the force balance at three and four. So it's gonna sit right here, right? So we get a plus K3 minus K3 minus K3 and K3 as well. That's it, that's all the elements, so everything else gets padded with a zero, right? There was nothing to begin with. And that is your global stiffness matrix. Again, you can do sum of forces uh, and you will recover the same exact equations, okay? So the one of interest, I think, would be to do sum of forces at node three, and you can certainly do that and you'll recover uh, the node three equation, right? Okay. All right. So that's pretty much it. This is, uh, it, it looks a little bit like magic maybe, but uh, obviously if you go back to the video on sum of forces at each node, it's pretty hard to argue against this. And clearly this really is the fastest way to do this. You can just look and scatter them directly by looking at the degrees of freedom that the elements connect. Okay. All right. That's it.